looking at the pelvic floor from this angle, um, we're just going to point out some general aspects of it. So as we said, it's going from the pubic bone to the tailbone and in between the sitting bones. We can take off the superficial layer. So what we can see here, if you look at it in this aspect, a lot of it is kind of like a cross shape. This cross shape is again going from the pubic bone to the tailbone and from sitting bone to sitting bone. Okay, this is just a superficial layer. There's more deeper layers to it, which are covering more of the surface. But looking at it from this perspective, you can see a few things here that I will explain. Okay, so let's for a moment not look at the genitalia, okay, since we want to focus on the things that both of the genders have in common. So let's look at the muscles, okay? So we're not looking right now at the top part. We're looking right now at the structure, the general structure of the muscles. So you will see here that there is an area in between the genitals, which could be um, the testicles in this case and the penis in the top. In this case, you can see um, the labia minora and the vaginal entrance. It could be both, okay, in this area or anything in between. So here we can see the perineum. Okay, this structure in between the genitals and the rectum is called the perineum. The perineum is a very important structure for the pelvic floor because most of the pelvic floor muscles are um, attaching to the perineum. This will be also very important for us in the future um, assessment. And when we look at it, if we instruct our patients to look at it, or if the patients or we are palpating this area, so this is a very important area as far as its location um, in the pelvic triangle, which we will explain further on. So in general, we talked about pubic bone, tailbone, sitting bones. That's where most of the muscles are located. We can see that there are the openings. Um, we can see here there's an opening to pass stool. Um, there is an opening here where the genitals are located, either for sexual function, um, for passing urine, or for giving birth. And we can see that the pelvic floor muscles are oriented around those openings in a double, in like a, in like an eight shape. Um, and we can see that there's also muscle fibers that are, um, located transversally, like horizontally in the pelvic floor and all of them in relation to the perineum. So we understand that the muscles have a function that is related to the openings, which is constricting and um, allowing things to pass, okay? So that's why they're arranged in this eight shape around the openings. And we have a function that is relating to the pelvis itself to stabilize this kind of hammock-shaped structure. Okay, looking at it from the side again, um, we will discuss again how it's supporting our organs, how we need um, stability, but also mobility of this area to be healthy. Okay, so again, looking at the openings also from the back, so we don't get confused too much by the genitals. So there is openings here. So looking at the muscle and their function further on, keep in mind, those openings need to be able to do th two things. They need to be able to hold things inside, but also they need to be able to allow things to pass. So looking at it again from the side, we need to have the ability to hold, to provide um, stability for our organs. Um, to do pressure um, management inside of the abdominal cavity. On the other hand, we need to have the mobility and flexibility um, to allow things to pass, enter and exit.